Hello, and welcome to Mimani Discussion Forum, a program designed to talk about matters that are of importance and of crucial matters that relate in one way or the other in our society, be it political, economical, social, and any kind of matter that relates to our society. I'll be your host, Hagai Imanumbogo, and today we'll be talking about the profounding effect of substance abuse among the youth in Tanzania. Now, the issue of drug abuse right in Tanzania is a challenging problem whereby most of the people, especially the youth, they face. And in the year 2011, the Drug Control Commission of Tanzania, whereby it deals with the issue of drug abuses, it reported that a number of people who were addicted ranged from 150,000 to 500,000 people. And the national guideline for comprehensive package of HIV interventions for key and vulnerable populations in Tanzania estimates that about 25,000 to 50,000 people were using drugs, especially in the method of injecting those drugs in their bodies. And thus, it was in the year 2017, which contributed to the unending burden of the HIV prevalence in our country right here in Tanzania. Now, most of these youth people, or these young people, they are engaged in very dangerous situations whereby they are used in one way or the other to, to transport these drugs and they use in one way or the other, which are, have harmful effects in their bodies. And one of the major drugs that these young people that they use is the use of heroin, cant, cocaine, marijuana, and also the use of inhalants, whereby they inhale petrol, blue, and paint. Now, the United Nations has created a day whereby they observe this kind of issue, and it's also known as the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, whereby it's celebrated on the 26th of June. And it was first observed in the year 1989, whereby before that, two years prior, prior that year, in 1987, the General Assembly resolution on the 7th of December passed the notion that this day should be observed on, on the case of the issue of drugs trafficking in many countries in the world. And today we have our guest by the name of Henry Safari, whereby we'll be discussing about this topic about the use of substance abuse among the youth in Tanzania. Now my guest here is no guest at all in this uh, spectrum right here in Milan, in, Milan, in Milan Media, but he has also come to this program and also to discuss about the ranging problem of drug issue here right here in Tanzania. And he is a substance abuse and addiction counselor, working also as a therapist in an, organi in an organization called Hope Again. And he has also worked with a number of organizations such as PSI Tanzania, White Ribbon Alliance and the Tanzania Sovereignty Initiative. And also he is a psychologist and a counselor in HIV programs and harm reduction and rehabilitation of substance abusers and alcoholics. Mr. Safari, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Welcome once again at Free Money Media. Thank you. Uh, uh, when we were when we were talking about a few minutes ago before we started yeah. this interview, you yeah. said that you were once interviewed right here in yes. our Swahili program called Kehara. Yes. And it's a quite a, a great experience that we are having here right now here at the Money Discussion Forum. Thank you so much. Now to begin with, yeah. may you please tell our viewers about your brief historical background before you got engaged in this issue whereby you are a substance abuse and addiction counselor and a therapist related to those kinds of issues that, uh, that are affecting one way or the other the young people here in Tanzania. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll uh, also uh, thank the whole uh, uh, program uh, management uh, here at uh, Mlimani uh, TV. First of all, as you said, uh, should be brief. Uh, I'm also a product, uh, an academic product of uh, the University of Dar es Salaam. Um, uh, but I, before I even pursued my career in, in, in counseling and psychology, I was 
uh, formally trained in 2004, in the uh, a class of 2004 and 2007, I formally trained as a uh, sociologist. So, so I have a Bachelor of Science in Sociology from the University of Dar es Salaam. And right after that, uh, the work or the line of, 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 of uh, work and the jobs that I was getting in the institutions you have mentioned before actually exposed me to more of uh, engaging in uh, grassroots level in the projects of HIV, malaria, and, uh, and, and, and uh, substance abuse. And so I found myself gravitated more or inclined more to liking not just to uh, deal with uh, only global or social issues but uh, engaging myself in one-on-one -on -one and uh, making sure that I try to help as much as I can in my capacity to help someone personally. So this drew me very close uh, more to uh, into this field and right after that then I decided that in my further studies, I will try to divert more into uh, not just uh, dealing with the national and uh, policy making uh, issues, but rather going directly and deal with uh, uh, very uh, touching to the core problems of an individual. And that's how I gravitated into, into uh, lacking psychology and, and, and cancer. But I think I also got uh, such jobs because even when I was uh, studying uh, my, my bachelor's degree, I really uh, got myself in touch with the courses, the guidance and counseling courses uh, as my optional courses. So most of the times I was trying to, to see what uh, guidance and counseling and, uh, and psychology has to offer. And I found myself there right into that. So during uh, my work and uh, experiences I've collected uh, through the time, I just found myself now doing this job. And I kept on uh, training even more and more, uh, doing more courses that uh, concern uh, counseling, uh, but at the same time, uh, specifically dealing with uh, people uh, using substances, uh, alcoholics, and also how that effect uh, of their use can 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 have uh, a tremendous uh, impact in the economic and the social lives and also their health. So this is why I've been centered uh, right uh, where I am right now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, based on your this brief historical background, yes. and you you said that you are a substance abuse and addiction counselor. Yes. Now, for the sake of the viewers back at home, yes. What does an, a substance abuse and addiction counselor? What does that person in the line of me? What are his or her activities, especially on your side? What do you deal with? Okay. Uh, generally, what I I do is to. My, mainly my job is to make sure that people who have been affected, yes. uh, who have who have what we say tolerance and dependence in, in, in drugs and substances and alcohol as well, people who cannot live without uh, drugs, people who have found themselves in a trap, never ever being able to live without the drugs, even when they see in the in, in, right in front of their eyes, you know, damaging their their lives or going to this destructive pattern of, 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 of life that everything goes astray and nothing works in, the, in, the, in their life or have a proper meaningful life, but still yet they cannot uh, get themselves entangled um, uh, out of, uh, of, of the youth. Uh, this is my my area now where I come and engage and chip in to help them. First of all, to help them uh, understand 
that I understand what they're going through because this is what I've been trained to do. Yes. I understand that uh, they're going through a lot. Uh, contrary to what other people might think because other people only see the effect uh, or the behavioral uh, uh, change right after uh, people have gotten themselves into using in the first place. So this is what I'm, going, um, I'm, I'm actually doing. I uh, get into their lives, try to tell them that it is possible to start afresh and uh, life without using uh, alcohol or substance or any other illicit substance for that matter is also possible. But I'm not just uh, going there with mere words. There are uh, certain uh, therapeutic uh, evaluation and, and also analysis, uh, uh, theories and also uh, engagements that I have to follow. So it all depends on what this person uh, has come uh, with. We do not treat any addict as the same. It's not uh, a type of one suit fits all. Because some come with a different uh, uh, problem. The person who comes, who is addicted to cocaine, and the person who is an alcoholic, when they come to me and, uh, and, and seek for help, it's not, uh, it's not the same. So uh, it all depends with the type of substance, substance they were using. That is first. The second, uh, it all depends uh, with, for how long these people have been using. So sometimes we, we receive people, but I will not be able to just engage um, in a psychological uh, therapy uh, up until I get help from, from, from other areas of discipline. For instance, uh, sometimes we receive people who are uh, totally disoriented yes. and I would need a psychiatrist to make an evaluation first. So it is also part of my job to welcome other disciplines, uh, other people with other professions to see what they can uh, diagnose from this person and after that then I will come and, and chip in and start uh, addressing this issue in a in a, in, in, in a manner that uh, I'm trained uh, for that matter. Uh, so I will address this issue in a, what we call a psychotherapy. Uh, and uh, right after that, we will monitor uh, the development of, of, of this person in the course of time and see what we can uh, get along uh, right after that. So it's not always uh, just a one-way uh, usual job to do. No, it will depend on the type of a client that I receive at the center. Okay. Yeah. And in your case, you have, how many years have you been working in your line of program? What sort of experiences have you experienced as a substance and addiction counselor? Like dealing with sort of different problems from different people. Okay. I started this line of, of working since uh, seriously since uh, 2015, and from 2015 to now, you can see that I have a vast experience, and a lot has happened. And one of the things that I can uh, 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 candidly say that I have collected as an experience is that. Uh, the use of substance abuse in Tanzania uh, is, uh, is, with no doubt, is of, of course, uh, an increasing magnitude, but there is also uh, uh, one fact that it is a problem globally. We're not saying uh, that experience in Tanzania makes it uh, so like one of these countries that are a little bit uh, lagging behind in, in, in combating it or in, in war against uh, 
fighting the illicit drugs or the use uh, of substance abuse, but no. The problem is that globally, this, this problem is tremendous. You understand substance abuse is such a lucrative business to, to people who have no, uh, who, who, who lack uh, empathy at all. People who think they can uh, take advantage of, of killing other human beings at the, exp at the expense of making money. So it is hard everywhere, and so uh, it is also hard in Tanzania. Yes. But we have we have come a long way. Uh, we have made a lot of progress uh, since uh, 2000 when I started uh, joining this, this line of work. Uh, in 2010, right now, 12, 15 years down the line, we have made a lot of uh, a lot of uh, progress in terms of. Uh, the government commitment and the policies and the political will and the budgeting and enforcing uh, our, our our agencies that uh, deal with, with, with uh, drug enforcement so we have met uh, we have made progress but uh, that does not eliminate the fact that uh, there is always a room for growth. We still have to do more. Uh, we still have to do more in, in terms of uh, uh, yes, there are rules and regulations that have been put in place by our parliament. But um, the rules and, and and the regulations will not work if we 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 don't comply. So a lot, I think, in terms of. Uh, uh, giving uh, uh, our our you know the instruments of our giving uh, our agency uh, proper and meaningful power to combat uh, this huge problem has has us to, to to go in line with the capacity the financial muscles to to, to deal with it. Because if we have people who follow, uh, who are, who have been entrusted the job to fight and 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 be in in, in, in at the forefront to fight uh, to fight um, uh, the trafficking of drugs or the use of of, of, of drugs in uh, in the country. If they are not being financially supported, the drug lords have more money than, than, than the people who combat it. Obviously, you don't expect the positive results that you, 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 you would want or you, or you wish the country to, to have. So uh, it's a huge, huge problem elsewhere, but it is also a huge problem here in Tanzania. And I have experienced that. And the other thing that uh, I would say is my experience in the models of therapy that we are using uh, we have also gone uh, we have also made a lot of uh, progress in terms of uh, increasing the facilities to accommodate people who use drugs uh, here in mainland but also in, in Zanzibar we, we have improved uh, a lot uh, and also the private, uh, the public-private uh, partnership, the private people to engage. Uh, we now have a lot of institutions and uh, the rehab centers that, that are owned by private people and they're doing a, a good job. But also, just like how I, I said uh, before, there's also a room for, for, for improvement. I think we need a lot of training uh, and facilitation to make sure that uh, we don't use the same models of, um, of therapies uh, year in, year out. Uh, you know, other countries have gone very far yes. and they have the very best of, of practices. I think it is in, 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 in our capacity and I think it should be our responsibility
to go in line with what other people have, um, uh, have so far achieved and try to imitate. It's not a, a bad thing to imitate a good practice from, from other countries. So I think it is in our responsibility to uh, go and be in partnership with these people and see what we can, uh, whether take our professionals uh, to, to, uh, to, to go there and, and, and learn something out of uh, what these practices uh, have done best to their countries and come and accommodate them to, to our systems. So the training and facilitation part, I think, is very uh, important, is the key. And the third experience, I think, um, is, the third experience is, to me, is the fact that we don't, uh, our models are far lagging behind in terms of incorporating other other disciplines, like how I, I, I said it before. Uh, in some centers that we have, in some rehab centers and sober houses, uh, other people tend to uh, have an approach where they think they can help an addict uh, just by themselves. Uh, like they're the custodian of all the knowledge and all the practices. This is not uh, this is not uh, right uh, in, in my in my view. I think if you are not in capacity to help a person, you should be able to to acknowledge that other people have been trained to do this, and you should welcome and incorporate them so that the intended goal to make sure that this person gets a better uh, service uh, that he deserves uh, in his best interest should be the key and should be the focus. Now these are the areas that uh, uh, people, I think, in my, in my point of view, don't really uh, uh, consider in terms of uh, the whole line uh, of, of, of rehabilitation program. Uh, disciplines like psychiatry should be inclusive. Discipline uh, like uh, psychology and counseling should be inclusive. And disciplines like social work should be inclusive. Because in some areas, we find uh, people going back to using again the, the substances just because you have not addressed a one or two of the issues. And when a, a psychiatrist is done with his job, it is not his, his, his uh, expertise to, to making sure that uh, this client uh, gets a better exposure right after, after the therapy, what we call aftercare. That is the job of, of, of a social work practitioner. So if we don't include all these uh, people into into uh, addressing uh, the issues of rehabilitating a person who has uh, a problem with drugs, we will always have this looping uh, 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 pattern uh, that uh, we have the clients who get into drugs, they get into uh, uh, rehabilitation system, and right after that, they go back to using again. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Now, in most cases, uh, especially for the health practitioners, they say that the issue of drugs started around in the 80s, yeah. whereby there were cases of heroin. Most of the young people were using heroin. And coming to the 90s and the early 2000s, the cases increased, especially on the side of the, uh, the use of heroin. Now, most of these young men and young women, they use needles or syringes, whereby they're not sterilized and they're unsafe. And the issue of the disease, which is a pure disease, 
HIV, it's mostly prevalent in among the youth here right here in Tanzania. And you also mentioned the issue of uh, facility whereby most, uh, most especially in the government, the government has done its job in creating those facilities for the drug, uh, drug addicts and maybe people who are in rehabilitation. Whereby in on the on the fourth of, Fe of February in the year two thousand and eleven, the national hospital, the, the national hospital, opened its rehabilitation center, and it was also known as the methadone clinic. Yes. Yeah, and which is also one of its kind in the sub-Saharan region. Yes. Based on those experiences which you have mentioned, in order for the viewer at home or wherever he is to understand what is substance abuse and why do sometimes these terms are a little bit conflicting about the substance abuse and the drug abuse. So are they the same or are they a little bit different? No, these terms are, I think they are, they are synonymous and they are being used interchangeably. Yes. But they, they more or less mean the same thing. Yes. And which is, uh, what is uh, abusing a substance? Uh, when we, we talk of uh, substance abuse, we mean uh, the use of an illegal or illicit drug, yes. or sometimes even prescription uh, drugs, but uh, being used not the, maybe I would say with an ill intention, not uh, uh, an intended, uh, an intended uh, use in the first place when we are speaking about uh, the, the drugs that are pres uh, prescribed uh, at the hospitals, uh, prescribed uh, uh, medications. So when you 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 intentionally uh, take uh, a prescribed uh, medication, and you understand that it is it has to be used. It has, first of all, it has to be prescribed by a professional uh, medical doctor for an intended uh, result uh, or uh, effect, because you have been diagnosed to have some kind of um, illness and you use it otherwise that is an abuse or if you try to uh, synthesize a herb or uh, you get into a lab and mix some chemicals and come out with something that is going to be helpful to your health or with an intention of uh, harming other people for your financial benefit, that is an abuse. So it is an abuse to a person who uses at the end uh, uh, as, as, the, as, as, as the end, uh, uh, end result. So that is an abuse. So basically it means uh, more or less the same thing. Yeah. Now, you also mentioned that, that alcohol is also or uh, maybe people, people who are engaging in alcohol or drink alcohol yes. drinks are also a part of the issue of people who are addicted to those kinds of drugs. Yeah. Now, to a normal person or an, an ordinary person or an average person across the street may say that yeah. alcohol or any uh, alcohol beverage are sold legally in stores, yes. in hotels or yeah. in any other kind of place. Yeah. Why do we consider that alcohol is a kind of drug and many people may be consumed or addicted to it? Why do you think it's in that particular category? Okay. It's, a, it's a very good question and I also get that, uh, that question uh, a lot. Uh, people uh, ask uh, that question and I think it's a logical question. Yes. Now here's the thing. Yeah. Alcohol by itself yes. is not a drug. But when it is used by a person who is an addict, yes. it becomes a drug. Now, who is an addict? Uh, what is addiction? Addiction is, 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 or an addict is a person who, uh, when using a substance, that is uh, what we call a, a psychoactive, uh, a substance that when 
uh, it is intaken, whether by sniffing, whether by smoking or drinking or taking a pill, yes. goes to the brain and changes the biochemistry and makes this person a bit high or makes him a bit depressed or makes him a bit hallucinating. These are the substances that we call them, uh, substances that we, we, we address them as uh, substances that, that are a big problem to a person who is an addict. And here is uh, uh, where we, we draw the line that uh, a substance by itself is not a problem. But when it is uh, taken by a person who has a problem uh, with this substance, it makes even the whole thing different. We have people who, when they take alcohol, or sometimes even people who, have, who take other substances, we also have people who take marijuana and it does not have the same effect like uh, uh, people who are, who are addicts. For a person who is an addict, there is a, a chemical enzyme in our brains called dopamine and it is a rewarding system. Just like how you and me enjoy our the very best of our meals, you know, when, when when, when we eat, we salivate and we become very much rewarded by it. It is the same way when addicts use these substances. So the dopamine uh, flow in the brain becomes even uh, at bigger proportion. And these people would not want the fun to stop. So they are going to get into a trap or a loop where they're going to wanting even more of that substance because they get gratification very high but it does not last for uh, a long time for a long period so we call it uh, an instant uh, gratification you get uh, you get to the point where you feel so good but it gets you down to the lower level and this is what you're going to do you want that substance that same substance because it is already registered in your cognition that you want that even more and more and more so this is how people get addicted so to a person who uh, who was introduced to alcohol for the very first time and it had that effect in you you would see him losing each and everything uh, and putting all these things in the second or third category in terms of the importance and priorities uh, in life. But only alcohol takes the, pro, uh, the, front, uh, the front bench. So every finance, every penny that he gets, the very first thing he thinks of is to go and and take uh, alcohol. Yes. Now this becomes a problem because this person fails to have a balance in his life. Now this is why we say alcohol to a person who is an alcoholic, a person who is an addict, yes. is a problem. And that is where alcohol turns to be a substance uh, uh, that can be also abused. Likewise, even uh, uh, even the, even the prescription drugs. Uh, there are some of the drugs, the antidepressants, uh, drugs that are uh, used to help people who have insomnia uh, getting back to their normal sleeping patterns. Some of them are being abused. So you can have prescription drugs by the doctor being abused, you can have alcohol to other people, it will not have that effect, but to a person who is alcoholic, it will have a huge uh, negative impact in his life, socially, economically, and even health. Yeah. Now, what is the danger of, of a person whereby he or she does not admit that he is 
going to have uh, an addict whereby he uses such, such, a certain kind of drug, but the more of the time he uses, and maybe one needs to help him or her, says that he is not an addict and refuses to get any kind of help. What's the line of danger? What kind of a dangerous situation is he putting it in himself in? I would put it in a very simple term. Yes. That is death. 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 And Due to the nature of, of the problem, yes. not many people uh, can just freely, in their own will, admit that they have a problem. Yes. And so sometimes it is even important to engage uh, in, 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 in intervention to help this person. Because uh, due to the course of time he has been using uh, uh, a substance, every time you use, and you increase the dosage because of the dependence and tolerance you develop in your, in your systems, you damage the neurological system, the system that helps uh, your cognition to sense the danger and uh, affect your responsive uh, system. So even to the things that matter most or that uh, are getting close to you as uh, uh, the ultimate dangers that a normal person would see. To an addict, they would not. They would not see. So it is very, very hard for a person who is so deep into substance abuse to, uh, you know, out of his own will to say, "Yeah, I have a problem. I need, I need help." To some, it is. You know, by very lack and chance that they get to that, and we call it uh, hitting a rock bottom, they come to realize that they are losing a lot of things that are meaningful to their to their life. Uh, for instance, the finances, you lose jobs, uh, you lose uh, very meaningful relationships, uh, marriages, uh, you know, the relationship between uh, uh, parents and, and, and children you know uh, getting into deep deaths uh, and sometimes even fatal uh, illnesses you, you understand that every time you, you ingest uh, because that is purely poison yes. every time you ingest it means you welcome a lot of um, health problems so for an addict he sees all these things but they don't matter so much because these substances have, have affected a lot their way of thinking. So I think it is uh, my call yes. that people who have uh, these people uh, in their families or in, the, in their communities to try as much as they can to call for help to professionals uh, like us to go and talk to these people and convince them to come to, to, to uh, therapies that they're going to get um, they're going to get better or else sometimes even the use of you know uh, you know doing what is necessary to be done to take this person into a safe uh, place yes. so that he gets help because at this time he acts uh, out of his his his, his uh, pure conscious uh, conscious and and, 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 and and a good thinking pattern. It's very hard for a person to just you know decide. There are people who do that, but it's not a very normal way. Most of the times we do this uh, interventions. Sometimes we very. Um, uh, you know, uh, ways that don't involve his will so much, but the will of those around him. Oh, hi. And yeah. uh, on the other note, we all know that this issue of drug abuse is among the youth here in Tanzania. Yeah. But there's some small cases whereby people who are aged 
having older people, they have this kind of issue, but most especially with the youth ranging from the age of 18 or maybe below 18. It depends on how, how that particular environment that particular person is in. Why do you think that most people in, in Tanzania, in many African countries, and also especially in the world, why do you think most uh, young people are engaged in this kind of lifestyle? Especially people who are prominent in our society, be it musicians, be it businessmen, whereby they were at the top of their peak of their career. But at the time when they are consuming these drugs, we hear that they are dead or maybe their health is a little bit shaky. Yes. Why do you think that most of the youth are engaged in this horrendous act? Yeah. It's a very good question. Uh, there are a lot of dynamics uh, surrounding uh, what you have just uh, asked. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, globally, it has not been uh, it has not been a practice. Or back in the time, in the '60s, in in in, in the '50s. Uh, drug uh, trafficking and uh, the drug use and the abuse of, 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 of other illicit uh, substances uh, was not uh, such a profound uh, uh, problem globally. But as the business grew up, it also grew with a lot of uh, ways to influence the market so there is this thing we call a uh, popular culture it is a way of the suppliers wanting to influence uh, the market that uh, they use or using of uh, a substance or illicit uh, drug is somehow a modern way of doing it and this is why the youth fall into that trap a lot. And kids from 13, 14 uh, years of age, you know, there is a way, a sort of way of uh, dressing, you know, listening to, to some of, 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 of so. certain type of, uh, of music, you know. And uh, a lot of uh, unfiltered, uh, unfiltered uh, trashes, if I may call them, yes. that came with the, with the globalization is what affects us a lot. So using drugs now becomes a way of living, a very way of sort of uh, every young person saying that he is a modernized way and it has gone viral to the extent that a, a young person whether he is pursuing uh, schooling or uh, excelling very good in sports and or in this and that area who is not who or who has not used any of these substances in their entire time and career they would be seen as you know people who are backward and who are not you know well, to the trends. Who, are, who are not going up to, to to the trend so a lot of youth are uh, being caught up in, in in that trend and it is a very big problem it's such a big problem that uh, short circuiting it is it means a lot, a lot of effort, sometimes from the government, from the religious uh, and the clergy. And, you know, it, it needs a lot of addressing and shouting left, right and center. It's not just a problem that has to be left alone to certain professionals. Parents have to get in, teachers have to be chip, uh, have to chip in. Uh, you know, curriculums in the schools have to be changed. A lot has to be done to address this, this one problem so that we create uh, uh, we create from the base 
uh, people who are going to be meaningful in their in their in their lives thereafter. Okay. Yeah. And most of the time, there's this kind of particular drug that most people are have, that they deal with, and yes. especially that one which I, I talked about earlier is the use of heroin. Yes. Whereby there was also another research done by National Hospital. Whereby at least uh, 2,000 people yes. they use this kind of drug in order to help them in combating the issue of, of being addicted to those kind of drugs known as methadone. Well, whereby only 60% of those 2,000 people stick to that particular kind of uh, treatment. But the reason behind it. They, they also knew why there was, all, there was only a few percentage of it, only 60 percent. It's because most people wanted to to test, uh, to use those uh, methods first and then later on use the cocaine later and see the after effect of, of it. It's, it's kind of a trial and error. Now, on the issue of the treatment, what does method do in helping uh, converting this kind of uh, particular situation? There are a lot, uh, as, a, as I say before, there, there are a lot of uh, therapy models that uh, are practical or they are uh, best practices uh, out there in the world. And I will not be able to, to be in a position to say which one is the best because these are theory, uh, therapies that have been scientifically uh, tested and proven to have some effect, some positive effect. It will uh, not, no, just one single therapy that has 100% uh, positive uh, effect that uh, you can recommend to a person that uh, this therapy has to uh, will, 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 uh, eventually help uh, uh, an addict or a person who, uh, who is dependent on, on these substances. So I am for uh, a lot of therapies and sometimes I think complementary therapy uh, approach should be the way forward because uh, there is harm reduction. There is what we call harm reduction. And, uh, methadone is one of or one of the therapies that reduces uh, the harm that these uh, uh, heroin addicts uh, get into when they engage uh, themselves in using uh, that illicit uh, drug in particular. So um, it is helping. But to what extent, I think, in my view, uh, in what I have been uh, experiencing so far, I think just uh, administering uh, methadone uh, to, 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 to a client without engaging them in uh, uh, proper approaches later after is equally uh, detrimental and it will make uh, a client very uh, easy to get back into that circle again. So if you engage this person in, in, in a therapy like methadone, I think thereafter you will have to be able to address a lot of uh, issues. First of all, uh, what has he, what has this person uh, lost in the course of time when he was using drugs? That also has to be addressed. Just like how I, I uh, told you before. So if he was functional, if he was responsible with his life, and he lost a job, and he lost his relationship, and you just give him methadone and right after that you don't address all the uh, issues. I think the trauma behind will always stay there if you don't address it. 
So you address uh, an issue, keep him maintaining him with a, with a methadone. After that, uh, put him into a um, uh, uh, psychotherapy uh, to make him understand the nature of his problem. But right after that, there has to be a social worker to help him through or to take uh, this person through with his underlying issues so that when you address them and you empower them, there will not be even uh, so much uh, having uh, this post uh, trauma because these people get into the cycle or the looping of that destructive pattern like every time using the drug because they have lost it all. So how do you regain back people to be functional again? I think that is a very important uh, thing to, to address. Not just uh, a medical uh, approach, but also look at uh, the social aspect of it and how you can help these people build up from there. I think that is um, a, that should be a way forward. And we will have less number of people who use and reuse and relapse if we address uh, this problem in that time. That is my well, dear viewers, this is Blimani Discussion Forum and today we are talking about the profound effect of substance abuse among the youth in Tanzania. And our guest for today is Henry Safari, whereby he continues to educate, uh, to educate us about the issue of drug abuse right here in Tanzania, whereby many young people, both men and women, even teenagers are involved in this uh, illicit activity. Now, back to the initiatives and the solutions about combating of you as a, as a psychologist and a therapist in this war against drugs. We have seen the government even and, and also other individuals right here in Tanzania use different ways in reaching the youth in order to help them in, in this kind of uh, trouble that they are experiencing yeah. Yeah. in drug abuse. Now, most especially is the use of music whereby yes. right here in Tanzania and most especially in the world, many young people are attracted to music, be it pop, R&B, hip-hop or any kind of musical genre. Yes. And back in 2019, we had a uh, Tanzanian hip-hop artist by the name of Kalapila, whereby he came up with a program with another media company. Uh, this program, this TV program, was to engage the young men and the young women who are seriously addicted in, us, in the issue of drugs. In your aspect, whereby you have worked with PSI Tanzania, and the and the other organizations such, such as uh, White Ribbon Alliance and the near Sovereignty Initiative, have you one way or the other used this uh, tool or musical uh, tool of music in educating the people in society? And how does music play a role in helping those people to get out of, those, of that kind of situation? Okay. I, I have not uh, been uh, so much uh, in experience with uh, music uh, to be used as a form of therapy, as, as music as it is, but I have worked in rural engagements and we were using cultural entertainment uh, uh, like uh, traditional dances to mobilize people and come together so that they can at least hear a PA system that we, we have organized. Uh, and it has, it, has, it has worked, it has uh, made a tremendous impact when we are doing uh, monitoring and evaluation uh, with the engagement and the programs that we have been doing. It, it has a very powerful um, uh, effect, a positive, a positive one for that matter. And uh, just like how I have, uh, I have uh, said that I'm not very much conversant and and and, and 
informed about the music uh, industry itself and how it has had, it has had a, an effect. And I'm pretty sure that music is just as much as it has a, a move and effect to, to the youth in other areas. I think it can also be used as a tool uh, to move them into a, a more positive and meaningful uh, 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 way of living. It is possible and I think it is, it is a very powerful tool. And I, I really uh, I'm also in favor and I was very also thrilled to also see such engagements uh, like Calafino uh, Foundation to use music into, into influencing uh, uh, the fellow artists first, but also the youth into uh, uh, making sure that they uh, uh, address the drugs problem, uh, uh, helping those who are already addicted but at the same time prevent the youth into getting into this uh, problem in the first place. It was, uh, in my view, I think that was a very good uh, engagement. And uh, I think uh, music as a powerful tool in, 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 in our society can be, can be very much helpful, although I'm not uh, very much present with that. Yeah. Now, on the final note on what we discussed in general about the issue of uh, drug abuse in Tanzania, what do you, do you have to say for a particular individual, especially, especially the one who is addicted, or maybe a particular family or a friend, or maybe a loved one, maybe is one way or the other engaged in it? Maybe that he or she is a drug addict. Or maybe it's not, or maybe he has a particular friend or relative that is engaged in this kind of acts and said that I have lost all hope and I don't think that there's no way I can really get back my life. Especially for that person who has tried and tried again to get help and he has failed in most of the times. And maybe people or maybe the society has isolated him. What do you have to say for that particular kind of person who is in that particular situation? Okay. Uh, what I, I would uh, love to say and call upon the society and families that uh, are now watching uh, this beautiful uh, program is that there is hope to anyone out there who is going through a tough time uh, getting uh, or at least springing back into his former life. Uh, right after getting into that trap of uh, using any illicit drug or uh, alcohol use, uh, binging alcohol, there is hope. There is hope, and there are a lot of people who are getting uh, cleaned up and they start over, and it is not too late. It doesn't matter uh, what age you are in or what you have lost so far. It is not too late. Uh, it is only too late when you you lose your life, when you you're, you're six feet under. That is when you can say, "I am too late." But as long as you're breathing, there is hope, and there is help. Maybe you have been trying like over and over again, just uh, and, and and failing just because you have not uh, you have not had uh, a proper uh, help. Uh, a professional help or support that made you get through this. It is a very tough uh, war. It is a very tough. Uh, it is a very tough road to go through, and people are uh, losing a lot when they are so deep into using these drugs. But there is hope. People get cleaned up get kicked back and into their lives and move on uh, with, their, with, with their lives. And actually they do very well right after that because we, we understand when uh, problems are turned into challenges, they teach you. They don't uh, cripple you down, you understand. So there is hope. 
and this is the reason why uh, uh, institutions like uh, you know Mlimani TV uh, is here for to educate people that there is way you can have your loved ones uh, being supported and being taken care of in a very uh, specific uh, 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 places that they can rehabilitate you and bring them back and be functional again and be uh, proper uh, citizens work and who can be uh, productive. So uh, to all people out there, there is hope. Yes. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. Dear viewers, that is the end of Limani Discussion Forum, whereby today we're with Henry Safari, who is a substance abuse and addiction counselor and a therapist from the Hope Again uh, organization. And we were discussing about the, uh, the issue of the profound effect of substance abuse among the youth in Tanzania, whereby it is a huge problem uh, going on right now, right here in Tanzania. But the government, individuals and different organizations are working hand in hand in combating this particular problem in our society. I was your host, Hagai Ibarangogo. Till next time, have a nice day.